Hello, Pamela. Good to have you here. Hello, Damien. Thank you so much. Can you hear me properly? I know that is always a silly question, but just double this, checking. This is the most important question, basically. I can hear you <laughs> loud and clear, and your smile brightens up this room. Oh, so thank you. Thank you very much for the positive attitude. Um, so how, how has 2021 has been for you? So far, so good, I must confess. Uh, after a very busy 2020 and uh, up and down. And yeah, so far, really, really positive. <laughs> to, be, to be quite frank, I'm also lucky to have been working quite a lot. But you know what? What I've noticed that many people from our industry are still waiting for the COVID vaccine because they expect the vaccine to change the world, to bring back the normal, basically. And to be quite frank, I think that whether the vaccine is coming or not, uh, the VR events are here to stay. And uh, next thing is basically that it is um, right now amongst the pandemics, it is fair to say that uh, creating events that give back become more, definitely more essential right now more than ever. Do you agree? I 100% agree. And actually, this is one of the reasons that when I discovered about social enterprise, for those that doesn't know, I will just quickly explain. A social enterprise business is still a business. It still needs to make profit. But it is how the profit is handled that defines a social enterprise. The company is actually driven uh, to give back more than half imagine more than half to give back or to reinvest in the purpose chosen in my okay. case was actually to promote different social causes and help unemployed events manager as i became to find a new source of income a true philanthropist <laughs> yeah <laughs> well i hope so <laughs> that's absolutely amazing but you know there's uh, so many ways that uh corporate social responsibility can benefit uh events for example more positive image of companies which support social or environmental issues all right so right now the future csr virtual events how to create virtual event that give back the floor is yours pamela <laughs> Thank you so much, Damien, uh, and I will jump on. So uh, thank you, everybody, that is uh, listening to this, and I hope you enjoy. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So I like, I really like to go step by step. And as you know, I just lead, I just told a little bit about the, the, the business concept behind. And anyone that wants to discover further, please just, you know, come to me and talk and we can discuss even further. But I'm going to start with sharing my screen. And why the future is CSR, CSR virtual events? and how to create virtual events that give back. So as I told you uh, shortly, the company is a social enterprise. And the company is a social enterprise that gives back and has a purpose. Uh, not all the company have, but that is OK. You can still also help and create CSR virtual events. Why you should be thinking on doing CSR virtual events right now just just, just, a, just, a brief, just a brief uh request uh, please switch on full screen mode if it's not a problem okay for you. sorry it's gonna be easier oopsie <laughs> don't worry no worries i mean you, you the way you speak yeah. and uh all the message is so, <laughs> so perfect that it wouldn't matter but it looks definitely better thank you very much oh, okay you're more than welcome sorry so the rise of unemployment it's this is the stats from uk so i would imagine other countries is the same we have now currently 1.69 million people unemployed in the uk by the la latest uh, uh data and a record in 370,000 redundancies and we know that in our industry especially in our industry was really really affected on top of that, we have the increase of mental health issues, you know, with the lockdown, with the restrictions and many charities now that lost a lot of fundraising and actually got more work 
uh, due to the pandemic. So how can you as an event manager or event organizer can give back and create a CSR virtual event? Simple. Use your event budget to make the difference. It's not a hard science, but once you get it, you can make so much more. Let's just do a social impact calculator because I like numbers. So if you have a 10,000 budget, let's say that this is reasonable for a virtual event. And if you give back only 5% of that, you can actually give 3,050 meals according to the Felix project. Imagine you saying and, and doing an event that actually give back immediately. That is like amazing. Step one, let's start on, on the steps because I love steps. So step one, choose a cause that you want to create event for. And there is so many out there. Try to think out of the box because some of the, the, the causes are most in need because they don't have so much promotion as the big ones. Not that the big ones are not important. I'm not saying that. Every single cause is important, but try to discover different uh, causes and charities and foundations and, and social enterprise no profit so you can get actually involved and create the event around that. Think in that perspective. Step two, create the event. In, in, in the case of the virtual events experience, we started with the Lewis Mooding Foundation uh, that helps to tackle the brain tumor, creating a so well-known virtual team quiz that is out there in the market and blending the two of them where the Lewis Moody Foundation can promote themselves and at the same time, people can get involved as well. Then Samaritans, for example, that is a cause much in need now, right now, with so many people in need and support. Face Whisperer, it's a body language emotional workshop where you can actually um, learn how to see how the people are really not only what they talk and but actually even if we we, we switch on our virtual cameras we can actually see the the person if they are happy if they are not happy and learn how to be more empathetic and spice it up that is a more diversity front of the business because cooking and sharing the the your own heritage can actually bring the people together to talk about diversity and inclusion as well add social enterprises in your supply chain now that you know what is a social enterprise and they are business committed to give back start adding them in your portfolio of suppliers in your supply chain normally they unfortunately lose a little bit a lack of promotion, but they are out there at Social Enterprise UK webpage and you can find them. I actually, during this uh, company build up, I learned so much and so many, they are so good and they are price competitive at the same time, good quality at the same time. Hey, they give back. Example, I would say stunts for sockets. They can do amazing uh, branded uh, socks that you can send as a gift for your attendees and actually every single socks that you buy one is donated to a homeless shelter in so much need because reality is socks are not so much given back in a in a in a in a shop in a charity shop and it's actually the number one item requested miss macaroon they do amazing macaroon that can be branded and you can send as a gift and they help to employ young people and do like a program where they teach how to do the macarons as well. Social stories, they have beautiful hampers. Every single product give back. As the social supermarket, for those that doesn't know as well, really, really strong and good. You can see here one example. Imagine how beautiful to be you being the change hero and buying using your budget to give back in a small thing is on a hamper every single item is given back to a cause and they are amazing step four finally create your social impact report that could be your power in your hands to convince 
your MD, your business owner, your marketing director, why you should be spending creating that event and why, what is the return of an investment? It's actually the return investment of good that I call. You're giving back directly from your event and helping somebody in need. So that's it. I don't know if I was quick or I took a while, but I hope that you enjoy. Of course I enjoyed We, I think we all enjoyed it. You were very quick, uh, very concise, but very, uh, very heartwarming, I would have to say. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I don't want to. I don't want it to see to, to sound like bragging, but like uh, I think like two years ago, I came up with um, the idea of uh, social social media action, which was called Work to Help. Hashtag Work to Help. Uh, I uh, from time to time I put an advert, for example, on uh, social media and groups for responsible for. Uh, events creating, and I said, for example, okay, this month I have this and this and this uh, day off, this uh, free. So if you can if you have an event, and if you contact me, I will do, I will give you first a very good uh, deal, and all the money will go to charity. Oh wow! And all the money will, will go to, to to charity, and you know what? The feedback was very good, very positive, because I think every single one of that of us, whatever we do, we can create. A reality that will give back. Exactly, and the the thing that I want to leave out there in the minds of anyone that is an event organizer, you actually don't need to do like uh, lose your event quality. In fact, some of these suppliers on adding uh, social enterprise in the supply chain can be even giving you better quality as well and uh, price competitive, and at the same time you can report that in your CSR annual report. You know, that makes the difference in terms of choosing to actually be, you know, more social conscious with the budget that you have in hand because everybody can do a little bit. And so imagine, I like that calculation about 3,050 meals. I absolutely because... love it also. I love it also because it's, <laughs> it's very powerful. Yeah, if you think about what is 500 in your budget that you would spend with perhaps a branded something, take out the branded something, put something, give back. So then you can actually, you know, feel that that event and make the participants of the event aware of it. Is it really important? Because sometimes we want to, 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 to be like anonymous and, and don't mention, but actually, in fact, they need to be mentioned because if somebody starts helping, the other will start helping. And that generates a big, big power in terms of, you know, giving back. So if every single corporate company out there start to use a little bit of their budget to incorporate a, a CSR action in their event, oh my God, we can definitely make the events even more powerful. And yes, I'm talking about virtual events, but hopefully when the the live events come back as well, you can keep doing the same, the the good back, and uh, that is the message that I want to leave out there. That is, first of all, it looks good, but the most important thing is that it feels good. It feels good to be able to help other other people, but basically doing our job. Exactly, doing our job, and on the virtual world like we saw so many trends like the trend number one like trying to figure out what was the tech out there more powerful more uh you know that is important there is different events for each station then the trend number two let's engage let's engage let's engage then number three let's keep it simple and now let's give back let's give back because that is actually what is needed right now i mean you are so inspiring, really. You inspired me. <laughs> All right, so guys, I have a, I have a announcement. Uh, if you have, and I'm being serious right now, if you have uh, an event planned for, for example, February, and uh, you need a host, let me know. And first of all, I will give you a very good price, and then the money will go to charity. Every single penny wow. will go to charity. <laughs> this is this is how inspiring you are, really. Can't, uh, I might catch you first, <laughs> so hurry up, people. <laughs> go for it, go for it. All right, but let's go back to uh, our uh, our talk. Uh, I have our chat. First of all, Tassia wrote, Pamela is a rock star. 
I cannot agree more. <laughs> I don't know who said it. that, but thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's Tasia or Tasia, uh, T A double S I A. Pamela is a rock star. Thank you very much for this statement. Uh, the next one, really interesting. Sounds like a great initiative. Initiative. Uh, all right. Uh, a very important question. How do you think companies can capitalize on putting on a social responsible, socially irresponsible event? How they can capitalize? Um, one, if you team up with a, a charity or cause, you might get so many social pushes from their side that will help to expand your event and promotion and perhaps uh, audience as well. Um, in the terms of capitalization, uh, I'm creating events as it stands and I'm giving back, but my business model is a social enterprise, so it's slightly different because once ends the year, I need to make the counts, give more than 51% and prove that I did that. But other companies can definitely team up with different causes and support them. All right. Uh, tell me, uh, Pamela, for example, how can I uh, incorporate more social enterprise suppliers, for example? That's very simple. And there is a web page just in UK. So you just Google social enterprise UK. They are the regulator of who is a social enterprise and who is not because they, they check if they are actually doing what they promise to do, which is good because otherwise anyone could say that they are social enterprise and then they certify them. So there is a, a browser there where you can Google Imagine I, for example, my printing, everything that is printing, I'm using a company called Trojan Mailing. And why? Because they are social enterprise and they, they their goal and what they do is they, they employ people with mental health issues in their uh, company. So they keep their giving jobs for people with mental health issues. So here we go. It's simple. You'd need to print, you need to do a banner, you need to do uh, an invite, you need to send anything inside of a box and you can search there. It's really easy. Very easy. This answer covers a bit uh, my next question, which is how could I make sure I'm buying from a CSR company, social enterprise for my event? I must say that my company is the first social enterprise in virtual events. So you always need to see, normally we have the budget from Social Enterprise UK. You can see on my website that I have the budget certified. And other uh, social enterprises that are out there that can help, like uh, Ms. Macaroom or Stand for Socks, they have like the buy social stamp. And they also have the mention about Social Enterprise UK. And if you are still in doubt, just go on the website of Social Enterprise UK, Google the, their name there, and there we go. You're going to find if they are a social enterprise or not. That is an amazing hint for all of us. Uh, all right. Uh, Deborah wrote, awesome, Damien. I wish I had an event. Uh, next time, Deborah. Next time, definitely. But I'm, <laughs> once, again, once again, I'm repeating this because I, was, I got so inspired by listening to you. Uh, and I think we can all chip in to making this world a better place. So... Once again, I'm going to repeat the same thing. If you are planning and doing and creating an event in February, let me know. Uh, all my salary will go to charity. Uh, this way, I will be able to help those in need. Uh, all right, Pamela, uh, what was the best uh, CSR virtual event you've done so far? <laughs> it's really difficult to choose one, but... All right, unfortunately, you have to. Oh, wait, two. Oh, or, too, okay. and, and of course, and give me and give me also an explanation. What made them so special? Okay, um, I think the 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 first one I would say that is is uh, the virtual team quiz with Louis Moody. Uh, that was actually sold for one client. That unfortunately, it's a laboratory, but I cannot reveal disclose what is the brand. But uh, they decided to combine that event with um wine tasting 
together, wine and cheese tasting. And I would say, answering your question, the two of them combined on the same one event was perfect. One, because the, the group start to do the, the divided in teams. They did the, the team quiz with Louis Moody that is uh, inspiring, uh, former rugby player, captain of uh, England team. And he's actually uh, the one that looks after the Louis Moody Foundation that helps to, to tackle brain tumor. That is, it's something that I didn't know when I met him. He, he actually said that actually a lot of young people is affected by brain tumor. And it's, it's, it's really sad to see that. So that event definitely, and the other one that was the wine and cheese tasting, I, I heard Simon Burton talking about the wine and cheese tasting with you. That one was amazing because gave back uh, from that, I took out from the profits and I gave back um, a course in virtual events by the media house to an unemployed event manager. So she could be certified by uh, the media house and potentially find a new job in the new normal. So I think these two events were good because the energy behind and the MED coming and saying and explaining the give back part to every, all participants generated that domino effect. Everybody went to the website of uh, the Louis Moody Foundation and start to donate even further, even if they didn't need it and they was not asked to. So it was really beautiful to see that that event was virtual, gave back, engage, pamper the people that was out there. And on top of it, you know, gave back for two times, like <laughs> for, for the event manager that learned uh, a new skill and for the foundation that got 5% uh, immediately as well from that profit of that event specifically. And then after the donations, and hopefully when I close my year, even more because I'm going to be splitting parts of it for the charities as well, partners. <laughs> I mean, tasting wine and helping others, that sounds like a perfect job uh, for me. Who could say that, no? <laughs> <laughs> All right. we, have, yeah. we have our next question um, by Ndoye, uh, written by Ndoye. Given that presenting in front of a camera for a virtual event is different than live on stage, should I invest resources to fight someone who excels in this new environment rather than pick up anyone just because it's virtual and you don't have to move physically? A hundred percent, they they should you know search for the best people that can speak. I've been in some virtual events that unfortunately they couldn't interact so well, and that killed the mood they, that killed the topic itself and if you have a host like you damien look he he made the the, the pledge <laughs> uh if you have a host like you and interacting and making the, the the event so much smooth uh definitely will make the virtual event even better uh tell me one more thing uh, i saw this question appearing and it disappeared suddenly uh i want to know how do you how do you find companies to work with because uh very often uh big companies have their charities connected basically or favorite ones that they give give, give, give to so how do you find uh companies that are interested in working with you uh i actually this one of the, this client, the laboratory that I did the event, they do have their charity actually, they are close to, but that didn't, didn't put them behind to actually help others as well. So I never came across with any company saying, oh, I need to give only for my charity or for this charity that I work with, because reality is they are buying the service of my company itself. So which is linked from my profit to give back. So it's not like something that they are directly giving back from their company, but they, they give indirectly. In that sense, that makes simpler, I would say, for them. That is true. I, th I, I have this question. It was Luis who wrote, have you found that some big corporations already have certain charities they are partnered with and how can you work with them? That was the exact uh, question that appeared on the and just And just another note, you are selling the concept as you sell any other events concept because the, like for example, the Face Whisperer, that is a body uh, and language um, workshop and emotions as well, which is really important. You know, like here, 
can you measure if I'm happy, if I'm sad? Maybe not, but after when you do that workshop, you will be able to say, oh, I know how Pam is really, really feeling. And that is giving back to Samaritans and that blend really well. That's the reason that I said on the step one, choose the cause and create the event around that cause because that will make the event be more blended, more concise and more correct. And that will sell actually. I do believe and I do hope that you are happy right now uh, <laughs> because first of all, you are smiling and your eyes are also smiling, uh, which is a very, very good uh, sign. Mm, oh, one last question, if you don't mind, because I would like to know uh, what is the hardest, the toughest thing uh, when it comes to creating a CSR event? What are the <laughs> obstacles that you can face? The hardest thing, I would say, when I set up, when I had that idea to create this social enterprise, create every single experience, giving back uh, immediately on top of my social enterprise purpose, um, the, the hardest thing is actually to, believe it or not, to get the charities uh, working with you. Because they need to what be careful. That? They need to be careful. They need to follow uh, compliance but it's not impossible, it's possible, but that is actually the hardest thing. And now they are very open because they need fundraising ideas as well, they need support, but making sure that your company is fully com comply, comply with all the laws, making sure that you have a contract in place, make sure that you communicate and then try to make so much about your company makes more about the charity and the cause, and that's what is needed as well. So that was the hardest bit of it. <laughs> uh, it may sound uh, strange what I'm going to ask you, but have you always been this uh, philanthropist type? Well, actually, my first event when I was in the university was to give back, and I created a team and we, we did this, um, I, I'm from Brazil, so my university was, I was studying hotel management in Brazil, and we had this campus celebration, uh, anniversary, anniversary celebration, and the events division needed to create what type of event they're gonna do to celebrate the university anniversary. So I was inside of the group, and we decided together to, every single area will provide their expertise. So the events management, we were responsible to bring the, the food, the drinks for a community that was living nearby the university that was really, really poor. So they could have that day to actually celebrate, but with food, with drinks, with support from IT to create like email, for example, because uh, they were very, very poor. We even partnered with the government and we brought in uh, to do registration for ID because there's some people, believe it or not, in that, in that location didn't even have ID. So they could do on site on that day. So they can just, you know, come close and walk and do the ID. Um, we also team up because the city is like nearby the um, Paraguay, which retains a lot of toys because they resell. So we team up with the police and they all that uh, toys that they had in their department, we actually gave back to the kids from the community on that day. So that actually was my first event. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pamela. Obrigado. I De nada. Say... <laughs> All right. Thank nada you once Daniel. again for uh, staying here with us, for mm. brightening up our our uh, evening. Once again, thank you very much. Also, stay with us because we have so many important things to say and so many good things to come. <laughs> once again, thank you very much, Pamela. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.